Hey, I'm Wendy from WM Design House, and I'm going to show you how to make beautiful faux candied apples today using two-part epoxy. So you're going to need some epoxy. I'm using Total Boat two-part epoxy. You're going to need some containers to mix your epoxy with some popsicle sticks. You're going to need some fake apples, some skewers. These are five and a half inch. They're actually made specifically for candied apples. And you're going to need some candy coloring in the color of red. This is made by Wilton. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually mix our epoxy because you have to mix it for a solid five minutes. Now, you want to mix equal parts of your epoxy of part A and part B. So I'm going to pour, oh, maybe about a half inch of epoxy into my container. I'm going to swoop off the edge here and then we're going to mix in part B. It's a little cool out today, so my epoxy is a little bit cold. So just check your level and then pour equal parts. You can mark your container um, if you need to, but I've gotten pretty good at eyeballing it. So I'm just going to wipe that off there. Now, you want to make sure when you're working with epoxy that you wear gloves. I've got some rubber gloves on. And now we're going to add our coloring. So the coloring comes in this small little tube. And I just open that up. And I'm going to fold back the little foil tab and just grab, oh, a little bit of paint and mix it into your epoxy. Now you can do this once or twice. I found with the red that it takes about two, two little scoops. So we're going to do that. And now we're going to start to mix our epoxy. Like I said, you need to mix it for a solid five minutes. So I'm going to check my timer and make sure, and you can see how this is turning nice and red. Now, it's a little cold outside today, so I'm gonna warm up my epoxy a little bit. This is just a, a little bath of warm water, and I'm going to add, uh, you know, I'm just gonna place this in here like a bath so that I'm just warming it up enough so that I can mix it really well. I can feel the difference already. Or you can put your bottles of your epoxy out in the sun and they will um, warm up quite well but it's really kind of cold here today, so I don't have that ability. So if you like my crafting, make sure you like and subscribe. I would appreciate that. I try to get on and do a um, video once a week. And then of course, I like to add lots of shorts as well. So, okay, so this is a good temperature we have now, and we're going to mix this for about five minutes. Now. After I've mixed it for my five minutes, I am then going to let it sit for a few minutes to kind of thicken up because I want it to give a nice coating to the apple. And once you mix epoxy, you have approximately 30 minutes to work with it. So you want to make sure you get all the bubbles out and you've mixed part A and part B. Now, you're also going to need a heat gun to um, get the air bubbles out of this process. So they're very inexpensive, and I will put all the links for all of the um, items that you need in this post, so you can easily get everything in one spot. Okay, so this is coming along quite nicely. We're also going to do, um, in addition to the apples, I'm gonna try some Christmas ornaments. So I'm gonna do some mushrooms. So I don't know if you follow the Christmas trends at all, but mushrooms are very trending or very trendy this year for the Christmas tree. And so I picked up some wooden mushrooms. They're so cute. Now I've masked off the stem and we're going to epoxy the top, but we do need to paint our stem first. So while our, not the stem, I'm sorry, the cap of the mushroom, 
while our epoxy is sitting, I'm going to do that. I'm going to paint the tops of the mushrooms. So we're just going to let this sit. Oh, maybe five or 10 minutes while we're doing a few other things. And then we'll come back and we'll pour our epoxy over our apples. But you can see how fun they are. And they create this fun little puddle at the bottom, which a real candy apple would do. So you can see how realistic they look. And, that, and then I just tied a simple little velvet bow on them. They're so cute just sitting on a, um, on a tray like this in the kitchen for a Christmas decoration. Or you could use them at each place setting and tie a name card to them. That would be really sweet. Okay, you could also make mini apples, hang them on a tree. You could, um, you know, create these into ornaments as well as candied apples. Okay, so we're just going to let that sit for a few minutes. And while we do that, I'm going to close up this red candy dye and get that out of the way. And now we're going to use some, just some acrylic paint. So the candy dye makes the epoxy transparent so you can see through it. So with that being said, I want the caps of my mushrooms to be red. So I'm just going to put a little bit of acrylic paint on top of my mushroom. So I'm going to just quickly do that. I am using this uh, Liquitex basic acrylic paint that I pick up at Michael's and just give a thin coat of red paint. Maybe we'll use the heat gun to, to dry this, but they acrylic dries really quickly, so we shouldn't have a problem. Get the underneath side. Now, I have masked off the stem. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna paint it or if I'm going to um, stain it. But for now, I just wanted to mask it off so that I don't get any resin or paint on it. Okay, so there we have our first mushroom and I'm gonna set that aside and then we'll let that dry. I've got, this is a great little set and it comes with three different shapes of mushrooms and some are tall, some are short. Now, I don't know if you've seen, I mean, everybody has got mushroom ornaments this year. So I've seen so many at Anthropology, at Target, and they're quite expensive. So this is a great way to make your own. And the epoxy makes them so bright and shiny. It's so pretty. Okay, so let's see here. We'll do a few more. And then let's check our epoxy and see how it's, whoops, there go our mushrooms. These mushrooms are a little bit um, finicky with standing up, so you gotta kinda be careful with them. Okay, so our epoxy is looking pretty good. So it's still, I'm gonna give it just a, another minute. Now, I find that when you pour it and it's thinner, it makes a larger puddle on the bottom of the apples. So this one I poured and it was rather thin, so I poured it very early. And then some of these, let's see, like this one you can see has a smaller puddle. I poured that one a bit later. Now, if you want your candy puddle to be smaller or you want to smooth the edges, you can always use a little uh, gator sander and you can sand the edge. So it really, doesn't matter. Now you need to prep a cookie sheet with wax paper and once you're finished the apple peels right off of the wax paper. It does take quite a while to dry so when you're finished you want to put them in a spot where they can dry overnight. They take about oh at least eight to ten hours to cure the epoxy does so it it sets up rather quickly like 30 minutes but then once you um, let it dry, that takes a little bit longer. Okay, now I did drill a hole in um, these mushrooms before, actually before I painted them. So I just used a little drill here and drilled a hole in the top. And then 
I purchased these little o-ring screws it's just a gold little screw and I screwed this in to the top like this you will need a piece of pliers to get that all the way in these mushrooms actually are really hard wood and just turn it like that so this way you can add a string or a pretty ribbon and create your ornament just like that okay so now let me paint that one real quick again I'm just using red acrylic paint nothing fancy quick and easy get that done and then we'll let these dry while we're doing our apples and then we'll come back and do our mushrooms uh, with the epoxy on the top at the end so again i'm just letting that epoxy sit for a few minutes to kind of set up okay get the bottom edge of that just like that okay so now we've got a couple mushrooms let's see we can do maybe one more real quickly i've got this short little stubby guy he's so cute and he's got a big cap so I don't know. Um, I try only to make a small batch of the epoxy at a time. It is kind of expensive, so you don't want to waste epoxy. So I just want to make sure that we have enough mushrooms and apples to cover so we don't throw a bunch of the epoxy away. Of course, you can buy it in different sizes. And okay, that's coming along quite nicely. Get that all painted on the bottom side and then we're going to let that dry now you could use a hair dryer or the heat gun to um, make these dry a little faster but I wanted just to show you that quick little process so now we've got the mushroom all painted and ready to go so we're going to put our brush aside for now and we're going to go back to our epoxy we're done with our drill and our pliers move some things out of the way okay so this is looking pretty good about now so we're getting a nice thick texture to the epoxy so now what we're going to do is we are going to remove the stem of the faux apples and we're going to replace it with a stick or a skewer and just poke that in oh some are harder than others. These are kind of hard to poke in. Just like that. And you just want to make sure that it's straight. Okay, now this is a little different shape. I've tried different shapes. I've tried different colors. You can actually use a green apple if you'd like. And we're just going to poke that down like that. Okay, now the process begins. So you want to make sure, like I said earlier, that you have two of these buckets. So you want to use your empty bucket and we're going to just wipe off our tongue depressor, our popsicle stick, whatever you've used to, to mix and just set it aside. And we're going to take our apple and we're simply going to pour the epoxy over the empty container so that the residual epoxy flows into your other container so we can reuse it okay just give the apple a good coat turn it as you go now you want to have a heat gun and the heat gun will get out any air bubbles that might occur while you were pouring your epoxy so you just go like that just let the excess drip into your container and then you're going to turn the heat gun on and you blow out any of the air bubbles that might be forming in the epoxy. So you can see them popping as you're doing this and it's quite easy. Just spin it and twirl it now you can leave it at this and just do one coat but i am going to go back and i'm going to pour a second coat on this apple 
So we're going to set this aside. And now we're going to use the other container that we poured from the first time and we're going to pour a second coat onto the apple. Just like that. I'm trying to just pour the majority of it out so that it's all in one container. Okay, so we've got that. And now we're going to just let that twirl. It's honestly just like making a real candy dapple, but turn your heat gun on again and blow to get um, any of the air bubbles out. Oh, they're so beautiful, you guys, and they're so shiny, and they will stay shiny forever. So I would suggest, though, that when you store them, okay, so now I'm going to take this apple, and I'm just going to put it down on my wax paper just like that, and I'm going to lift that up just so you can see that it's starting to create that little puddle at the bottom there. So you can see that. So I'm gonna put that down and now we're going to pour our second apple. But first I'm going to, since I don't wanna waste, I'm gonna scrape out from the one container into the other, to the full container. Just like that, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna use this as our empty container and we're going to pour from our full container over our apple again. So as I was saying, um, I would store these probably inside. I, typically I store all my Christmas decorations in the attic and it gets hot in the attic, so I really wouldn't want them to be in the heat. I wouldn't wanna store them in the heat. Okay. So I've just about got all of the epoxy out of one container and I'm just twirling. And now we're going to turn on our heat gun and blow out the bubbles. And again, I just think doing two coats gives you a really deep red candied apple, which is beautiful. So, you know, you could do one coat, like I said, but I do like the, the two coats. Okay, put that down, switch our containers, and pour. So it's starting to thicken up. I can feel it getting a little bit thicker. And like I said, once you start to mix or once you've mixed your epoxy, you have about 30 minutes to work with it. So that's why we make it in small batches and just do a couple apples at a time. And you just hit all of the sides to get all the air bubbles out. Okay, just about perfection. Okay, and there we go. And let that sit. Again, just like a real candy apple. Okay, so now I'm going to do some of the mushrooms. So let me get all of this epoxy into my one container. I am doing a gardening theme on my Christmas tree this year. So I wanted to put some mushrooms on my Christmas tree. Okay, so they feel like the paint is, is good and dry. So I'm going to do the same process that I did, and I'm going to just pour the epoxy over the top of the mushroom. Just like that. And we're just going to let that drip any excess off. We'll get our little heat gun going. And you, 
you guys probably can't see it, but I can see the air bubbles just melt away the minute you turn the, the heat gun on. And it will also help to get some of the excess epoxy off. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take it by the hook and then I'm gonna put it down and any excess will drip off of the mushroom. Okay, this guy looks like his paint's a little bit. So I'm just gonna use the heat gun on this for just a second to dry the paint. I just wanted to show you the process of painting, so that's why I didn't prep them ahead of time. I wanted to make sure you saw all the process from beginning to end. Okay. So here we go. I'm holding it by the stem now, and I'm going to pour my epoxy over. And you can see how it's starting to thicken up. So you only have that limited time to work with it. Okay, I'm about done there. So I'm gonna get my air gun again. blow out all of my bubbles, get any excess off. Now, when I'm done, I'm either gonna stain or paint the stems. I haven't quite decided yet. And then I think I'm gonna take a white uh, pen, like a paint pen, and create some white dots on the mushrooms. So they'll be really cute hanging on my tree. Okay, so now we've got that, and we're gonna just put that down there. Now, if if it drips off the edge of the mushroom, even better. That would be so fun. It would look really natural that way. Okay, I'm gonna gather my epoxy. You wanna be really careful that you don't knock these over. So I'm gonna put all of my epoxy into one container again. This is very much a repetitive step. I'm just basically doing the same thing over and over. Okay, so okay, use your empty container for the epoxy on top of the mushroom. Okay, Ooh, got that one really covered well. Get our gun going. Your fingers can become kind of sticky because this stuff is quite sticky. So I'm just blowing all the air bubbles out, letting the excess fall off. And I have one more to do when I finish this one. And I'm just gonna use, I have some skinny, like quarter inch red velvet ribbon which will be very pretty to tie them onto the tree with. Okay, so there's my third mushroom. So you wanna make sure when you tape the bottom off that it's level so that when you set it down that it stays flat. Okay, we have two more mushrooms that are painted. This is such a fun one, it's kind of nice and tall. So, oh, let me scrape all my epoxy into one spot. Base. Let's see here. Into one jar. Okay, so now we're going to put our empty container there. Pour onto our mushroom. Okay. Make sure you cover all of the parts of the mushroom cap. Turn our gun on. Now I did the underneath side as well. Turn this back 
on. Oh, so fun. I love epoxy because it's just, it looks so realistic and so shiny. Okay. So now this guy is still dripping quite a bit. So I'm going to let that drip for just a minute. Okay, and then I'm going to put it right there. Okay, we have one more to do, one more that's painted, but I need to drill a hole in the top. Let's see. Oh, I don't have any. Oh, I do. I have one more screw. So let's see. Let's just drill a hole in the top real quick. Typically, I would have done that before I painted it red, but that's okay. Honestly, it could be done before or after. And you probably could even do this after you epoxy, um, but I like to do it before. And then you do want to make sure you have those pliers because it really does help to screw it all the way in and make sure that it's straight. So just turn. that way you have that little ring to add your ribbon just like that. Okay, so here we go. Now our epoxy is really at the end of its working phase now, so I can feel it's getting very thick. I'm going to have a little left over. I probably could have done a few more mushrooms, but that's okay. Okay. So we're going to pour our last mushroom. We are going to just pour. You can see how much thicker it is now than it was in the beginning. But once we get the heat gun on it, it'll be fine. Okay, I think I've got everything covered. Get our heat gun going. This heat gun takes some talent to turn on, I'm telling you. I have a hard time with it sometimes. Okay. Get all our air bubbles out and drip off any excess that we can. But I do think it's a good idea to make sure that you're um, screw the, the little eye ring in before you epoxy because you don't I don't know if the epoxy would crack but it's really probably best just to do it that way so that is how you make candied apples and epoxy mushrooms so I hope you guys like this and you give it a try and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time